I am going to bring in Zach next um, to tell us a little bit about the work that um, they have been doing at Elft on social value. So Zach, over to you. Uh, no, thank you. And really glad to see everyone and really wanting to share our journey with social value and how we integrated that into the procurement function at East London. So just a brief introduction. Um, so uh, since last year, about October 2020, we've been looking into social value uh, and working to incorporate into ELF as we become an anchor and really leading some of the good work around our local communities and also targeting priority groups. So for us, we engage with various stakeholders and developed our own group to really identify key priorities that we think we want to tackle and achieve at our organization. And it's really trying to trans, um, translate these priorities and integrate into our frameworks so that when we do go into the contract management, the good work doesn't get lost and it actually improves. So based on various meetings, we've actually uh, determined the main priorities that we have. The key first one is real living wage, which is currently integrated in all our procurement processes where we require that the suppliers must comply uh, we also are encouraging creation of equal work opportunities and training opportunities for local people, uh, people with protected characteristics as per the Inequality Act, and also groups that were hardest hit by COVID pandemic last year and currently at the moment as well, supporting young workers and getting them into the workforce, investing, but also retending, um, keeping retention of um, money spent in local economies and then finally, commitment to sustainability and also a target to reduce carbon emission. Now, these are all great. However, we've done some assessment and it has been a challenge uh, in our organization to identify um, metrics and have a baseline to actually work on and improve. So we've been looking a lot about our contract management and uh, reviewing our contracts. We were identifying which contractors actually provide and do pay their staff the real living wage and work compliant. And it's been a negotiation for the last couple of months and until now working with them and supporting them to actually uh, have some fair pay for their workers. Another thing um, that has also been looked at our organization is the amount of spend. So I've been doing a lot of work with um, various networks for Anchor and um, part of that is identifying the various spend that we have across our organization. Now, this is uh, for ELF, but to transcend to other groups, uh, it could be a tiered approach. Something that we are uh, doing at the moment is having tiers. So immediate would be East London catchment and then expanding further into the North East London catchment and potentially greater London. So this is just an example of what we've been uh, facing with our current um, spend. So those were the very easy baselines that we were able to identify. Some of the struggles and hurdles that we've actually come to grasp during our um, journey with the procurement process is identification and defining lo uh, locality, um, having it should it be more specific into various regions and some might say ward. So for example, Limehouse within the Tower Hamlets area, um, or does it become more broad and more um, general, such as London, uh, for our case, East London. So it's really identifying that and really following through with that um, kind of definition. The clarity on the priority groups, uh, this will depend on various organizations, but we decided to go with the protected characteristics as per the Inequalities Act. But in, as a mental health organization, we identified that there are other uh, aspects that we really needed to explore, which was service users which is very important and key to our organization some of the questions that we do go out to tender so now this is our proposals and it's trying to be compliant with the procurement regulations is record only now it's a bit bizarre to go out and ask suppliers to ask record only questions and not have them be assessed on it but the benefit of this is that we're really trying to draw out kpis to really encourage social value and um delivering that in the contract management. I think that's a very key and missed opportunity with some organizations. They can really drive extra social value in the contract management and not just at the predetermined procurement stage. So an example would be a, a set amount of percentage of women workers and BAME workers. Um, now this, I might not be assessing as a score to determine the award. However, this would be something I'd have as a KPI 
and working as an anchor on an organization to support the supplier to maintain and improve that kind of metric and level. Uh, qualitative processes uh, questions. So it might be strategies and plans and how they engage with various uh, groups. Um, one example would be having an equal pay strategy for women. Uh, metrics that are compliant with the procurement regulation is also another hurdle and some organizations and procurement teams I've discussed have also faced concerns as well. You can't really place favoritism or having a disadvantage for supply just because they can't uh, meet a metric. We're trying to be fair and equitable, which is always part of the procurement process. And then finally, it's a challenge um, for certain organizations, particularly the small uh, voluntary sector and also small medium enterprises. Um, it can be a burden to actually do the monitoring and measuring these figures such as the carbon emission and also another aspect which um, has come based on that various supply engagements we've conducted. Um, measurement of their protected characteristic workers, it's um, not ethical or sometimes not ever measured. Um, so it's very um, coming up to light that there are challenges regarding some of the measurements. So what does it all mean? This actually feeds into something which is a wider picture. So there's a Northeast L London Charter that's currently in discussion. So this is an agreement with 14 organizations that have signed up. So it's including local authorities and NHS. And the idea is to work on a framework that really self-assess and identifies um, four main priorities. So one is how much your social values have been integrated into procurement, maybe 5%, it may be 15%. So the higher it is, the better you score uh, as an organization and feeding into the Northeast London Charter. Um, also the percentage of your supplies that are compliant with the real living wage, um, local uh, base suppliers within our Northeast London postcodes and also the amount of supplies that are small medium enterprises and this might expand further to uh, voluntary sector. Now this is my last slide so what we're the current back. stage is oh, no worries. the current uh, status is that we've at least have a baseline of what we want to measure and what we want to go out. So at the moment, we're actually going through quite a few tenders and we're really using this as a test and seeing and having real life uh, implications and having real life um, evidence of how it works in the real world in the procurement. Also, another thing is that it's not a one, uh, one stop um, shop or it's not a one glove fits all. This is really has to be bespoke to uh, different different um, categories. So IT, estates, digital, um, all completely different. So it's always having a set of core objectives and core metrics, but also tailoring it and bespoking to the type of um, market that we're going to. Um, having the resource implications is a big thing. And I mentioned a lot about the contract management, but it's really important to have that contract management within the social value. Otherwise you lose that kind of a work that has been planned out and it gets lost. And finally, it's uh, uh, in discussion at the moment, but the long-term aspirations and what we want to achieve, uh, do we wanna have 50% of women? Um, do we wanna have increase in BMAE? This is all up for discussion, but really identifying uh, our strategies for the next five years and what we wanna achieve from it all. Thank you.